Hey everyone, this is Andrew, and in this video I'm going to give you a review of the Eric Whitaker Choir Library by Spitfire Audio. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm saying Eric Whitaker correctly, uh, but feel free to make fun of me in the comments below if I'm not. So, uh, the Eric Whitaker Choir Library by Spitfire Audio is, as you might have guessed, a choir library. So, Spitfire Audio, to my knowledge, has never done a choir library before. So, it's pretty exciting that they decided to go ahead and do this, because there really aren't that many choir libraries on the market, at least not kind of like big scale, high quality ones. So they collaborated with Eric Whitaker, who is apparently uh, a Grammy award winning composer and producer. I might be mixing up his credentials. I've, I've actually, I've heard the name. I don't never listen to anything he's done, but apparently he's a, he's a big deal and he's known for recording great sound in choir. So it's, that's why they recruited him. So this is a custom interface library by Spitfire Audio. It's not a contact library, um, although I might misspeak a couple times and mention that it's a contact library just because I'm used to saying contact library. But it's a totally custom interface, as you can see in the screen now. Um, it works in a similar way to contact. Uh, they could have very easily scripted all of these features into contact. Um, there are some advantages and disadvantages to it. Uh, first of all, the advantage is that you don't actually have to have contact, but most of their libraries of this scale run on contact player anyways. Um, the disadvantage is that the sample loading is a lot slower than contact. Um, on the flip side, running multiple instances of this can actually share the samples between them, so you don't have to load all the samples several times. You could actually send up a patch that has kind of everything in it, then it'll load the samples once, and then every time you do multiple instances, it'll just kind of pull from that pool of samples. At least that's what it seems to do, um, because I never have to wait twice. I just have to wait once. So anyways, I'll play some notes here. That's, that's kind of the general gist of the library. By the way, any pops and stops and samples that occur don't typically occur while you're playing the instrument, and they definitely don't show up in any final bounces. However, with screen capture and, you know, uh, it typically takes a lot, a little more processing on the computer end, so things tend to perform a little worse, so just keep that in mind. So they do give you many articulations. This is kind of the master patch. If I switch to short ah. Long mm evo. And moments like that is where I think this library really shines. Um, the kind of softer, more intimate moments. The loud stuff, I mean, maybe it's just in my style, but I don't, I don't really prefer it. So to me, that sounds very nice, and I could easily use that in the ambient section of a metal song. I could use that in the buildup of an orchestral part to kind of really get the feels going. Um, you could use it as kind of a background of an epic film moment. Um, but some of these short ah sounds are a little, not really something I would do. There are also dynamic sounds. So they recorded the singers actually swelling and doing different kind of things like ah, mm, ooh, eh. Um, and as you start getting in, there's some weirder things, like episodic uh, techniques. By the way, I don't know if those glitches are coming through in the final recording, but those are the things I was talking about that normally don't occur uh, when you're playing. So just, again, keep that in mind. And so that's kind of what the episodic things is. They have various, like... You know, this one, if I can even read it, ooh, nah, or 
Yeah. Nah. <laughs> or ah, nah. And there's pitch classes, like this is built in intervals. Go to major seconds. So I'm just holding down two keys and it's just doing this. And this is another moment where this library really shines because you can't really program that in an instrument. Uh, that's the kind of organic sliding of the human voice is not something you can replicate. So it's good they included those um, because they give a lot of realism to these sounds. And then they have those for a couple of other articulations. Then there's these little effects groups. Oh, hey! Oh, oh, hey! Oh, hey! And these are, are useful. You know, they're good to have, but they're not necessarily like deal breakers. Um, and that's that's the kind of end, you know, of the main all-in-one patch. Now, they do have all these uh, various breakdowns, like you can load the all evolutions, and that actually has a completely different set of sounds. Um, so if it's going to load. I did mention that these, this library has a pretty long loading time. So as you can hear in this All Evolutions kind of patch, uh, the sounds are, are different than what was in the All-in-One patch. And they're a lot more specialized, but again, this is another perk of this library, is that it has a lot of detailed techniques and articulations that just cannot be simulated by recording individual notes and playing them on a keyboard. You need to record those details if you want to have the realism that they, they provide, because uh, you just can't play that on a, on a any kind of scripted interface it has to be recorded as is to get the full effect um, so load in another one i'll go into the uh rhythmic evolutions and again seeing the, the loading times here um so this time while it loads I'll, I'll take a sec to talk about the price of this library and who i think it's for um when i posted to my exploring the sound video someone commented saying how they thought this was kind of a bloated overpriced library that wasn't very diverse. Okay, it's done loading. Um, <laughs> but uh, just to talk about the price for a second, I think full price is $5.99, and I think the discounted price, uh, which might actually be over by now, was $4.59. And I think it is a high price when you think about what you get, but only if you think about what you need as, as a musician or composer. Um, there's kind of two different target markets target markets you can approach when you're trying to make a sample library. Um, there's the kind of one size fits all, you know, sell it to the mass public, anyone that does music type of library. And then there's selling to professionals who make their living from music and they just want, you know, the best of the best. They're willing to pay pretty much whatever for it because they need it. And they're just going to make way more back on it than what they pay because they're you know, it gives them a new capability. You, you know, aside from hiring a choir, you don't have anything on the market now that competes with this in terms of everything it provides, at least not to my knowledge. Feel free to correct me. Um, so I think that's their target market is that professional audience. And in that way, the price is kind of, it's, it's, not, it's not a concern with a library like this. That's not what it's about. It's about having, you know, the whatever hundreds of gigabytes of, detailed sounds and articulations in a solid interface that inspires the um, the composer in a way that, you know, allows them to make more money with their music. Um, and it's just a very good sounding library. So anyways, that's that's my, my two cents on the price. 
Um, if, if you're the type of person who's looking for a good bang for your buck library, this is not for you. If you're looking for a very well-designed choir library, you want the best on the market, you want something that sounds great, you don't necessarily care about the price too much, uh, this, this is what you want. So uh, back into this, I just loaded the All Evolution sound. So these are actually like, you hold a note and they play a kind of tempo sync pattern. Switch to another one. So that's another example of sounds you just can't get if you were to try to, you know, if you only had like a one note per key kind of sound, even with round robins, etc. This is another cool sound that I came across when playing this library. So one note doesn't sound too weird until you hold it out for a while, so. So, so just just think if you have a scary moment in a movie, um, that's that's gonna make a killer build up section for you. That I, as far as I, I mean, maybe you can buy a sample pack that will have choirs in it, um, but as far as I know, there's no sample libraries that give you that kind of power to start in any note and get like a microtonal cluster out of it. Um, so that's the kind of an example of like the very niche applications that this library fills in. I'm not going to cover the actual sounds in the Evo library because I've already made uh, two videos on the Evo library. So I'll put a put a thing up. Put a I never know what side to point out. Put a put a little eye thing you can click on to check out those videos um, if you want to hear more about what those libraries are. So at this point, I just want to give kind of my overall opinion of the library. Now. It is a very niche library. It fits one purpose, and it does fit that one purpose very well. It's a damn good choir with a lot of niche, intimate applications that will fit pretty much every void you have for a choir library, but that's really all it will do. The Evo library, Evo library, does have that, you know, that Evo setting where you can pick different sounds, map them across the keyboard. That gives you a lot of interesting power. There is some effects settings in there like tape saturation, delay, reverb, and ADSR envelopes, which make it a little more sound designy, but not to the extent that I personally would want. It's a pretty massive library, so in terms of uh, dollar per gigabyte, it's not too bad, but it is a very pricey library, and I've already talked about that to an extent. So I'm not going to rehash the whole price talk here. Um, this I don't think this is the instrument where you're going to be talking about you know, it only costs 50 cents per gigabyte of samples on it, you know, so it's it's not that kind of library. Um, the interface, I think, is very clean. It's the same interface that Spitfire used in the past on the Hans Zimmer library, which is another great library that I think people also like to hate on for some of the same reasons I've seen people hate on the Eric Whitaker choir. Um, but again, same kind of target market. Um, the interface, my biggest issue with the interface is that the slow the slow loading times uh you didn't see too much of that because i cut out uh, one of the one of them um, and i left in a shorter one but when you're loading up the evo library it can literally take like two or three minutes to load up the main patch um so i don't i don't know if there's ways around that in contact i would do a batch resave and that would fix that immediately i've never had a three minute loading time in a contact library after i've batch resaved the patch I don't know if there's a way to batch resave in this. I've opened up this uh, settings window and poked around. I mean, I I could probably ask Spitfire and see if there is a way. Because, um, for example, in the my previous video on this library, I talked about the sign design capability, and I reached out to them about that. So they were good at replying then. Maybe they'll be able to 
give me an answer for that. If they do, I'll post another video showing how to speed up those loading times. Again, on the interface, it's very simple. Uh, different live, different uh, articulations will have different settings here, uh, but reverb is always a given. It's a very simple slider. You turn this up to control whatever setting you have selected. Um, your mod wheel is going to be mapped to the dynamic expression, which uh, if I... You know, that controls the dynamic layer that you're actually sampling. You also have your expression, which is mapped to if you have another slider. Um, that's kind of like a volume within your volume. Um, so that's that's handy. That's standard. But it's a very nice kind of, you know, two knob and a slider interface. So it's very, very slick. And um, it just, it just kind of works well. Spotter interface, it's nice how they lay out the samples. It's very quick to page through everything. You, it's very, very simple. It would be the same in a contact library, but... Um, very straightforward, you know, you, you turn up the uh, mic positions you want, it starts cranking out, loading the samples, and you can blend the different sounds that you want. In the effects uh, here, these are only activated for certain things. Um, various samples will have, you know, they all have reverb, because they just record um, what I think this is, controlling the room sound, and it's blending in the room reverb. It could also be an, uh, could also be an artificial reverb, I don't really know. Um, but depending on the samples, you'll have the ability to control the release of the sample, so how long it rings out after you let go of the note. There'll be vibrato you can blend in to the sample. Uh, and then tightness, which kind of changes like the timing, because when people naturally play uh, a note, they'll have they'll put in their own little like lead-ins, and so they give you the ability to control that lead-in. It's probably just shifting the sample, but certain patches will have different ones of those enabled, and it's, it's very simple to use because um, it just gets put up here and you can control them here, but you can also go on effects. And then in the Evo libraries, this effects window is different. It has your ADSR, and then in here it has your your other effects, or maybe it's the other way around. But anyways, uh, that's it for this review. Um, I, if you want to check out my actual written review with a little more information, you can click the link in the description. Um, I'll put the, um, put the link and the link to the other videos in the description as well. Um, in terms of a total review, uh, I think this is kind of a three to four star type library. Um, in terms of sample quality, it's top notch. In terms of versatility, it's kind of, it does one thing. Um, in terms of functionality, um, it's, uh, or performance rather, I think that the, everything works well, but the problem is the loading, which can be kind of bad. Um, so over, overall, I kind of give the library like a, a 15 out of 20 stars in my review, which comes down to a three and a half star rating, which, you know, I think it's like, really this library is about if, if this thing is for you, then you're going to know you want it and you should buy it. If it's not for you, um, or if you're just looking for a library, you know, it's probably not for you. Um, if, if you're the person who needs this library, you're going to see this and you're going to know you need it and you're going to buy it. If you're just looking for a new cool library, then you're probably going to want to skip this one. So anyways, that's it for this review. If you enjoyed, please leave a like, subscribe for more, hit that bell if you want to stay notified, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.